Do you want a fast and highly effective meeting process for keeping your staff on track? Well, of course you do, why wouldn't you? But before I show you what it is, I'm Tristan Bond, I'm CEO of Practice Acceleration, and what we do is we help great healthcare professionals to create thriving businesses with an emphasis on building a business that doesn't depend on them. Look, meetings get a pretty bad rap. People think they're, they're too long, that they're boring, they don't actually achieve anything in them, and I totally get it. But if that's the case in your practice, you're not doing them the right way. The truth is, without using a system or a framework for running your meetings, it's so easy for them to turn into these unstructured conversations that don't actually end up anywhere. So please listen up, because the method I'm about to share with you, it enables you to have an incredibly powerful and impactful conversation with your team, increase productivity, create alignment, and finally build a really powerful culture where everyone's effective and working together all in just nine minutes. So let's dive in. Number one, so the first step of the nine minute meeting is to create context. Everyone needs to know the purpose of the meeting. It can be as easy as saying, Today we're talking about this topic and this is why it matters. So create context. Be really specific about your objective. You need a clear purpose. Have a clear outcome in mind for that meeting. Plan that in advance. Never attend a meeting without having a very clear objective and a clear outcome in mind. That's number one. Number two. The second step in the meeting is to set the flow of the meeting. It's kind of like setting the agenda. You'd say something like, great, now here's how this meeting is going to go. We're gonna talk about this, and then this, and then finally we're going to do X, and so on. Clearly map out the entire agenda that supports your intentions that you've already declared back in step number one. So that's number two, a clear bullet point agenda that flows in order. Number three, the third step of the meeting is to engage your team individually. So how do you do that? And that's a good question. Well, here's how you do it. Quite simply, for example, just say we're talking about patient rebooking or retention, you'd say, what difference would it make to you if you could retain your patients better and they were more engaged with your treatment? It's a direct question. I like to ask future paced benefit driven questions. This shifts your team into actively wanting a solution. That's step number three. Step number four. Number four is to show proof. Talk about a time when someone has implemented the solution you're talking about. We all feel more comfortable taking action on something when we've got the confidence that it's already worked for someone just like us. We seek safety and support as humans, so make sure that you do this step. Here's how, you might say, let me show you what this looks like in the real world. I recently had problem and I applied solution and here's the outcome I experienced. This makes it real and makes it achievable. Point number five is this, handle objections. Before the meeting, make sure that you prepare a list of potential objections that your team might raise with you and work out what you're going to say. That way you're not caught off guard and you can keep things moving along. You need to be prepared for all situations. This is the most overlooked step, so please note this down. And then number six, point number six is this, seek and achieve agreement. Ask everyone individually, do you understand and agree to take this action step? Get a yes and continue to objection handle until you do. Doing this means you're setting up group accountability. Point number seven is setting the action steps. Lay out all the things they need to do in order, when they need to do it, and how they'll be held to account from now on. Because intentions without actions, they'll get you nowhere. The eighth step for this process is to set follow-up timeframes. Agree with your team what they need to report back to you on and when they need to report back to you by. And then book this into your schedules with clear documentation of what was agreed upon. Otherwise, you won't be able to close that loop and none of it will be worthwhile. This is where you really start to step into your CEO shoes and get the respect of your team as their leader. And then finally, the ninth and final step of this meeting process is to set regular meeting times. If you don't do these meetings regularly, you won't get to a place of consistency with your team's performance. So that's it. 
This is one of the meetings we run every single week and it makes a massive difference for building momentum and results. Hey, I know there's just been so much we've covered inside this episode, but if you would like to learn more about growing a more successful practice, one that doesn't depend on you, you should grab a copy of my latest book, The Practice Acceleration Method. It's gonna be a total game changer for you. It is filled with actionable insights and do this, then do that instructions for systemizing your business, training a team of A players, attracting new patients on demand, and just so much more. I'm gonna pop a link in here below, that way you can get access to it. Just go through the book, follow it step by step, and you will see the growth in your practice for yourself. Thank you so much again for watching. I sincerely appreciate it. I'll see you on the other side.